It's a rather small, small space for the two of us. Okay, enough space. <laughs> um, I can't see anybody here, but... Uh, well, 23rd of July, 1983. I was 19 years old. I'm old, but I remember. That was the day that one of the bloodiest civil wars that this world has known broke out. I was playing softball cricket outside a friend's house in Kalpati. For the next 26 years, this was the backdrop to our life. A, la a war that claimed over 75,000 lives. A war that displaced hundreds of thousands of people. And it was quite normal that during this time, whenever there was a social gathering, most of you would remember, the conversation would gravitate towards the war. And on one such occasion, in a fit of bravado fueled by copious quantities of alcohol, I made a promise to my friends that if this war should ever end, I would walk from Matra to Jaffna. The next morning I woke up, splitting headache, but a vague recollection that I had made my promise. But I thought it was pretty safe, because the chances of this war ending seemed pretty remote at that time. But a couple of years went by, the 19th of May, 2009. I wake up to the realization that the war had come to a bloody but abrupt end. And the first thought that crossed my mind was, how wonderful it would be to live in this country of peace. Second thought was, oh shit, I better walk. <laughs> so I set about trying to find people to walk with. I went and spoke to several of my friends, some of who are in the audience right now, and all of them looked at me like I was mad and said, no chance. They'd walk a, a short distance, maybe a day, maybe two days, but they weren't going to walk the whole distance with me. But I kept talking to many people, asking them whether they would walk. I happened across an, a friend of mine who was an advertising executive who said, if you want to make this a success, why don't you do this for a cause? It made perfect sense, but I didn't have a cause. So now I had two searches. I was looking for a cause, and I was looking for people to walk with. Till one day, Nadan, who had worked with me for, we had been working together for about 10 years at that point, walked up to me and said, Machang, you know this walk you were planning on doing, are you serious about it? And I said, yes, I am. He said, would you like to do it for a cancer facility in Jaffna? And it made perfect sense. There was a cause, cancer, which knew no boundaries. We were going to build this hospital in Jaffna that had been ravaged by war for 26 years. We were walking the length of the country, raising money right from the south all the way to the north. And Nadan representing the Tamil Hindus and me, the Singhala Buddhists. It was absolutely perfect. We had our cause. I lost my sister to cancer many years ago. And at that point, I didn't know that it'll be an inspiration for what we did with Trail. She left behind two young kids. And on the journey back from the UK, where she passed away, I was thinking, what is the cancer facility in Sri Lanka look like? When I came back, I started understanding what that landscape was. And to my dismay, there wasn't much facilities or infrastructure in Sri Lanka. There was one hospital that served the length and breadth of this country, and they didn't have enough staff or enough beds, and the infrastructure was extremely poor. At that moment, I realized the gap in supporting cancer was really to build the infrastructure. I don't know if you know, but over 38,000 people are affected by cancer yearly. And unfortunately, over 8,000 of them pass away due to the disease. During the war, the people in the north would pack their bags, come down to Colombo with their families by sea, not by road, but by sea because of the war, and spend months taking treatment. But treatment wasn't the only thing. They would pawn whatever they had, sell their lands, and move down to Colombo in order to ensure that their loved one could survive. And this, was the reason that we really thought a cancer hospital in the north would make a difference. So we had our cause. When we set about planning this, Nathan and I split it into two areas. One was the whole logistics piece, and the second was the fundraising part. On the fundraising side, we set ourselves a target of $1 million, and given our corporate experience, we thought we'll follow the traditional routes of fundraising. We started going to all the big corporates with what we thought was an awesome story. And we went to all the blue chips, we went to some of the biggest companies in this country, and the response we got was absolutely amazing. Nobody wanted to support us. 
Nobody. Everybody thought we were nuts. They said the timing was wrong, that the government wouldn't support it, it was too sensitive. They gave us a whole bunch of reasons. Didn't matter. Quitting was not an option. So for us, it was back to the drawing boards. Sari and I were very determined. We were somehow determined to do the walk, connect the country, and do this for cancer. We understood that there were many people in this plight. And if we could curate something to an individual, we may be able to collect more money towards building this hospital. So we came up with this idea of a website. A website where an individual can sign up, write why they're doing the walk, and send it out to their friends and family, get the funds in, and also get motivation by people writing on their page. It became their walk as an individual. This was the start of a revolution. This was the first time in Sri Lanka there was an online platform for crowd sourcing of charities. It was the first time in Sri Lanka that people got together to walk from south to north in a large batch. We had over 30,000 people that signed up on this website. We had over 250,000 people send money through the website. And this became the real conduit to collecting the money. Whether you walked a day, a three days, or 27 days, they started using this page as a motivation to collect more funds for the walk. So there goes the corporates. We didn't get them. But we suddenly started getting individuals who wanted to support the walk. We had some friends help us. And some of these guys were ambassadors for the walk. They walked with us in areas where they'd never been before. They inspired the towns and got people to walk with them. They were amazed with what was happening in each of those towns as they walked through. And imagine the time where this was war and people are coming out of it and these superstars were walking with us. The other area that we did was we wanted to create as much ideas in terms of collecting money. One of those was buy a brick. We thought of this idea of creating a wall with all the names of the people who will, has enabled the build of this hospital. We sold the bricks and had their wall up on the, name up on the wall. And basically, the idea was to really get them to walk up there one day and say, I helped build, build this cancer hospital. We also got people to buy cement bags and donate it towards the building. And also got ICU beds that could, they could name after a loved one who they've lost. These were different forms of what we did to really raise the money for the walk, because we were not getting money from the corporates at that time. Trail was really launched through social media. It was probably the first campaign to really drive charity through social media. And what happened with that was we really drove many people to the website. 20,000 people signed up in a very short period. And we would get funds from a friend who sends it from UK to US all the way down to Australia and then Fiji Island of someone who would donate to me, and I didn't know them. And that was a phenomenon of social media supporting Sri Lanka. This also helped us in finding a donor who had lost his mother, father, and, son, and, and his brother to cancer, who wanted to donate a large sum in setting up a hospital in the north. And this really drove the communication and the drive to collecting money in different forms for us. On the 1st of July 2011, we kicked the walk off in um, Dondrahead in Matara. We thought there would be a few people who would turn up for the walk or uh, the first day. And we were really surprised when the two of us drove in and there were about two and a half thousand people there to greet us. And what was amazing was not only did, were they there for the opening ceremony, but they also, most of them walked with us. Some of them didn't make the entire distance on the first day, but they gave it an effort. And this kind of was very auspicious because on, during the 27 days of our walk, we had over 30,000 people walk with us, an average of over 1,000 a day. The participation along the, alongside the roads as well was incredible. We had thousands of people cheering us away along the way. But the most incredible thing that we experienced was the spontaneous generosity of the common people that we experienced every single day. In Valigama, we were starting the walk a little early. We used to try to beat the sun. So we were starting up at about 5.30, and we were walking along the beach, and some fishermen had just come back from their night out at sea, and they had just beached their boats. One guy came out and wanted to know what the walk was about, 
And when we told him, he immediately took his hat off and started running among his colleagues and started collecting whatever coins, whatever cash that they had and gave it to us as their contribution. A little further down the road, we went and there was this lady, she must have been in her 60s if not 70s, pushing a cart stacked with bananas. And when I was passing, she said, why are you walking, son? And I said, um, I gave her the reason that what, to, what we were doing. She immediately stopped her cart and started distributing all these bananas to the people walking past. Now, that may seem rather insignificant or something that anybody would do, but this was probably her entire week's earnings. A little further, and this was one incident that I'm particularly ashamed of, um, is we were walking into Panadura town, and those of you who know the clock tower, you know there's a slight incline. And I saw in the distance a bunch of guys that I could only describe as a, as a bunch of thugs. They had their sarongs folded up at their knees, they were bare-bodied, and they were all kind of peering at the distance at the walk coming towards them. We had expected a little bit of trouble somewhere along the way. After all, we were doing something rather sensitive. The wounds of the war were still fresh. And there were lots of people in the South that had lost lives, lost loved ones, well, lost loved ones' lives. And we thought there might be some trouble at some point. And I was convinced this was going to be it. As we got closer, I saw them running in to what I immediately assumed was going to be to go and get their weapons and come out. Being the brave guy that I was, I quickly stepped to the middle of the road, gave myself some space in case I saw them coming that I could at least react. And they came running out and they just absolutely shocked me because they came out with boxes of ice cream. I have to admit, I burst out crying. I was so guilty about the immediate assumption that I had made. But that was the kind of generosity we saw along the way. We had little kids running out with tills. I would never have run out with my till for anything. We had people throwing money out of buses. We even had a beggar who insisted that his day's collection was going to be given to our cause. Sari and I really wanted to connect the communities as we walked. We wanted to engage them in one understanding about cancer and also the unity between the South and the North. We came up with an idea of carrying a till. And there was probably one time that Sari and I didn't agree on something, and that was over this till. And what did you think of the till, Sari? I better not say that here now. Yeah. <laughs> he basically, he thought that we wouldn't be able to raise any money on the road from the, the, the common man walking on the road. To our amazement, including mine, we raised over 10 million rupees walking from south to north on the road. <laughs> there were people getting into buses with these tins, coming out of the buses, collecting money. There were people running into schools, running into shops, bugging everybody who walked down on the road. And this was the amazement, amazing connection that we had with the people there. This was a way and method that we used to really connect with people. And one such story, in the center of Sri Lanka, we were walking up, and this little girl gets out of the bus, walking towards us. And she asks somebody, what are you guys doing? And suddenly, I see her flying into a house, which was close by. She comes running back with a till, and she wanted to give it to me. As I collected the till, I looked at this little girl, she had no hair. I immediately looked at the parents, and the parents said, we just went to the hospital to get a chemo treatment. This was a four-year-old girl who had just come off a bus and had the view of taking their personal till and giving it to us. At the age of four, Sari or I would not have parted with that till. The rest of that day, Sari and I didn't speak to each other because we were so emotionally touched by what happened. Further north, it was a beautiful day, sun was coming up, and there were three little girls standing on the edge of the road with their hand out. Behind them was a UN tarpauling with sticks held up, which was their house. My colleague crossed the road, collected the cash, and came back, and he was in tears. He was in tears because these three little girls who had lost their loved ones, who didn't have a house, or, a, or means of living, gave 100 rupees or a dollar at that time towards this walk. 
It was, it was acts of generosity like that. People who had no means were the most generous on this walk. And that's what, we, what made this walk. We also have hundreds of stories that we could share with you, but these were some stories that really touched us in these different places. Nadan and I set out to raise a billion dollars. But through the incredible acts of generosity of over 200,000 people, we ended up collecting $2.6 million. And instead of building a cancer facility that was going to be attached to the Jaffna Hospital, we built a fully-fledged 120-bed cancer hospital in Telipale in Jaffna. The penny really dropped when in January last year we went for the opening ceremony and saw this hospital open and saw the first patients checked in. Over 800 patients have received treatment as of today. What started off as a drunken promise had turned into something incredible, and we are so proud to be a part of it. For 30 years, this country has been ravaged by war. A war that saw many killed. A war that really divided the South and the North. Whether you were Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu, or a Burger, or a Catholic, this walk really united everybody. It healed the country, and people who said that we couldn't do it really saw us change the landscape in Sri Lanka. For us, there was a few things that we wanted to achieve from this walk. One was to unite the country through this walk. Two was to spread the message about cancer and hope of infrastructure being built. Also to understand that people between the South and North are not different, and they are the same. And also, every single penny that we raised went towards building that hospital, and there was nothing that we took as administration or anything else. But most importantly for us, the 27 days of walking, the 670 kilometers every day, the pain that we went through and the blisters that we had was absolutely worth. If we could save one life, and one life alone, it would have been worth for us to build this hospital. And that's what this walk really achieved. And for us, we plan to keep on walking. We're walking back next year, and we hope to build a hospital in the south. Thank you very much. Hello, yeah, I'll be mine.